Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. Well, as many of you know, Dr. Greger of NutritionFacts.org has made a bunch of videos over the past several weeks about the dangers of arsenic and rice. And I've received tons and tons of comments from you guys asking me for me to comment about this. Like, what is he actually saying? Is rice dangerous, as he seems to be saying in some videos? Or is it actually not dangerous, as he seems to be saying in others? So I patiently waited for him to finish his 13-part video series before making this video so I can get all the facts. So here we go. How dangerous is rice? Shall we eat it or not? Well, first of all, let's see what the actual science says, according to him, about the dangers of getting cancer from rice. For all these years, warnings about the arsenic levels in U.S. rice potentially increasing cancer risk, but had never been put to the test until this study out of Harvard and long-term consumption of total rice, white rice, or brown rice was not associated with risk of developing cancer in U.S. men and women. So that should make us rice lovers sleep a little bit better at night, knowing that the latest science from 2016 finds no increased risk of cancer from eating rice. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's get down to the nitty gritty. What does Dr. Greger actually recommend about rice? So bottom line, until we know more, my current thinking on the matter is, if you really like rice, you can moderate your risk by cutting down, choosing lower arsenic varieties, and cooking it in a way to lower exposure even further. But if you like other whole grains just as much, like if you simply don't care either way if you have rice versus quinoa or whatever, I'd choose the lower arsenic option. Well, he said quite a lot there, so let's unpack that and learn. One thing he said was to choose a lower arsenic variety of rice. And let's take a look at that first. Like, why is arsenic even in rice in the first place? Well, it turns out that rice is really efficient and effective at absorbing arsenic that may be in the soil that is planted in. So I guess the next logical question is, why is there arsenic in the soil? Well, one problem is that when arsenic-containing drugs are fed to chickens, uh, not only does it grow out into their feathers, which can then be fed back to them as a slaughterhouse byproduct, but what do you think happens to the poop? The arsenic from the drugs in the feed can get into our crops. So yes, it's really the poultry industry's fault for feeding their animals arsenic-containing drugs to keep them healthy in their unsafe, unsanitary conditions, and their poop gets out into the environment and pollutes the nearby soil. But there's yet a second way that arsenic pollutes our soils. Well, arsenic-based pesticides have been used more than a century on millions of acres of cotton fields. It's just that 30,000 tons of arsenic chemicals already got dumped onto cotton fields in the southern states. So it's understandable why there's still lingering arsenic residues, even if you don't add an ounce of any new pesticides. So these arsenic-containing fertilizers, combined with the arsenic drugs given to poultry in the United States, explains why there's so much arsenic found in most rices grown in the United States. So is our rice here really that bad? Yes, U.S. rice averages twice the arsenic of Asian rice. For example, nearly all rice samples tested imported from India or Pakistan had arsenic levels lower than 95% of domestically produced rice. All right, not looking good for United States rice. But look at the range here. U.S. produced rice went from here all the way up to here. Rice grown in the U.S. showed the widest overall range and the largest number of outliers, primarily due to where it was grown. Aha, you'll see here, the lowest arsenic-containing rice grown in the United States happens to come from a state that doesn't have a giant poultry industry polluting the soils and never had a giant cotton industry polluting the soils. So where is it? There's significantly more arsenic in rice from Texas and Arkansas than rice from California. If you just look at California rice, then it's actually comparable to rice produced around the rest of the world. Now, this is presumably some of the data that led Consumer Reports to suggest brown basmati from California, India, or Pakistan might be among the safer rice choices. So there you go. Avoid rice grown in the United States South, and instead choose long-grain brown rice, preferably something like basmati from California, India, or Pakistan. So if that's all you take away from this video, what kind of rice to get, that's what you need to know. Well, some of you might be asking now, why brown rice? Didn't Dr. Greger say this about brown rice? Brown rice averages two-thirds more toxic arsenic than white rice, 
What matters most though is how much arsenic gets absorbed into your body when you eat brown rice versus white rice. And if you measure how much arsenic is in the urine after eating either rice, it's pretty much identical. Brown rice is no worse for you after all. So now we know what kind of rice to get that has the least amount of arsenic. How about preparation of rice? Are there things we can do to reduce that amount of arsenic down even lower? Well, people always talk about rinsing rice. What effect does that have on arsenic levels? But rinsing Rinsing didn't seem to affect the arsenic levels, so why bother? So that's good to know. I've been rinsing my rice all these years thinking all this time that arsenic was being rinsed away, but it wasn't, so why bother? Well, Dr. Greger shows us another way to prepare our rice that will actually reduce the amount of arsenic in it. If you boil rice like pasta and then drain off the water at the end, you can drop arsenic levels in half, 50 to 60% of the arsenic gets poured down the drain. Whereas the typical way we make rice, boiling the water off like a, in a rice cooker or a pot, doesn't help. Well, that's amazing. For both brown and white rice, boiling them in a large pot of water, kind of like pasta, reduces your arsenic levels by about 50%. But remember, Dr. Greger recommends brown rice over white. Well, let's see now exactly why. But the boiling like pasta and then draining the excess water really does cut way down on the arsenic. And while that also takes a whack on the nutrition in white rice, the nutrient loss in brown rice is significantly less. Yeah, as it turns out, since brown rice is more of a whole food, all the nutrients are contained inside of it rather than outside of it. So when you rinse it, you're really not rinsing the nutrients away like you are when you rinse white rice. Here it is graphically. A quick rinse of brown rice before you cook it doesn't lower arsenic levels, but boiling it instead of cooking to dry and draining off the excess water drops arsenic levels 40%. That was using like six parts water to one part rice. With white rice, you can rinse off a little arsenic, but after cooking you end up with similar final drops in arsenic content. But the iron gets wiped out in white rice by rinsing and cooking, whereas the iron in brown rice stays strong. And even though Dr. Greger was just talking about iron there, the same holds true for pretty much all the other nutrients Dr. Greger discussed. That's why he recommends brown rice over white rice. So when you rinse it and boil it and you know large amounts of water and drain that water away, you're not pouring the nutrients out like you are with white rice. And let's move on. There's more good news now too. There's manufacturers now actually stating how much arsenic is in their rice. For instance, Lundberg. Compared to the average U.S. brown rice level of 154, Lundberg does do better. In fact, their aromatic brown rice, presumably their brown basmati and brown jasmine, average less than national white rice levels. And if you can get your hands on this Consumer Reports article, they tested arsenic levels in many manufacturers' rices, and most of them did pretty well. Most other brands were pretty comparable. Uncle Ben's, for example, and Walmart. Though Whole Foods scored the worst, about a third higher than these others, and exceeding the national average. So, what's the takeaway from all these videos of Dr. Gregor's about arsenic and rice? Well, first of all, it's great to know that the latest science shows that there's no additional risk of cancer from eating rice. And this goes for people that are not even concerned about where their rice comes from, people that are eating all their rice from the South. So, there's things you can do to reduce your risk. Like we said, have brown rice, basmati rice from California. Pakistan, India, avoid the southern states completely. Furthermore, there's things you can do as far as your preparation goes. Boil it in more water, kind of like pasta, and pour the water out to reduce your arsenic exposure by even another 50%. So, and another thing he said we can do is just not eat rice all the time. Maybe substitute in other grains like quinoa. So I don't think my life's gonna change all that much. I might try to do this boiling method of using like six parts water to one part rice and see how that goes. But other than that, I'm glad to know that despite all the warnings out there, there doesn't seem to be a great danger of arsenic poisoning and cancer from eating rice. As long as you follow some basic guidelines, which I just 
outlined here. So anyway, leave your questions and comments down below. What do you think? Are you still frightened to eat rice? Or do you find these sensible guidelines that I summarized from Dr. Greger's videos to seem reasonable, you know, safe ways to eat rice? So let me know what you think down below. And if you got some out of this video, if you like the time I put in watching all 13 of these videos, hit like or just tell me down below too. And I um, guess that's about it, guys. So until next time, as I'm going to keep doing with my long grain brown basmati rice from California and India and Pakistan, keep it carb, baby, keep it carb. Stand, stand.